With the holiday time discounts that personalized printing companies always offer, I decided now was a great time to treat myself to an early Christmas present or two. I've been on a quest to add cool wall art to my game room, and here's my newest piece. It's a custom printed piece of art based on one of my favorite Game Boy games, Metroid 2. I love how much it resembles the original game box. And unlike a flat poster, this piece has dimension, sticking out from the wall, further selling the illusion of a game box just blown up to a larger size. This is quite a simple project, but I hope you'll still allow me to take you through the process. Before we move on, here's a 5 second disclaimer. Video games, game characters, and art assets are protected by copyright. Print projects on my channel often use protected assets. Copyright law is tricky. You may rightly be denied when trying to print art you don't own. Are we good? Good. I've wanted to incorporate art from game covers or boxes into my game room for a while. Instead of posters this time, I wanted to try something a little different. What I have here is a custom printed canvas that I bought online. The canvas is stretched over the included wood frame, giving a third dimension that a poster doesn't have. Metroid is one of my favorite game series, the cover of Metroid 2 is one of my favorite pictures of Samus, and Metroid 2 is one of my favorite Game Boy games, so it was a natural for me to pick it as my first piece. Plus, it was a big help that Game Boy game boxes are square. If you remember from my turning video game screenshots into wall art video, we discussed how adapting existing images to the set aspect ratios of standard print sizes can require some compromises. Everything I discussed in that video is applicable to art from game boxes too. My first instinct was to try to make a printed canvas of an NES game box, the super iconic Super Mario Bros. 3 for example. What I found is that NES game boxes are at a roughly 5 to 7 aspect ratio. Unfortunately, not one of the print companies I surveyed are offering a canvas size at that ratio. I'd have more options to choose from were I turning these cover arts into posters, but for a canvas my choice was more limited. The nearest ratio they offered at a size reasonable for my needs is 2 to 3 for an 8 by 12 inch print. And as you can see, the box doesn't quite scale to fill this size unless I were to deform it, which I did not wish to do. Actually, most other game boxes you may be nostalgic for, such as SNES, N64, and even Genesis covers, are also at more or less a 5 to 7 ratio. That's why I turned my attention to the Game Boy. Every company seemed to offer at least one canvas size that is square, so by targeting this shape, I didn't have any issues to deal with. For Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance box art, which are all square, all you really have to do is upload the highest resolution version of the box art that you can, and you're done in one step. There isn't any need for complicated alterations, the art just fits properly. Not that I didn't find a way to overcomplicate things. The print company I used has a variety of choices for the edge of the canvas, including an outer frame, which isn't what I was looking for for this project. Other options were for different edge designs and edge depths. Not every company has all the same options, so it depends on who you use. This company offered plain black or white edges to fill the space on the sides of the canvas. Other options include stretched, which takes the last pixels from the perimeter and stretches them down the sides, mirrored, which just as named mirrors the edge of the front image, and folded, which allows the image to extend past the front all the way down every side. I thought I would use this extended option to my advantage. In my image editor, I started with a blank image at the final print size. In this instance, I went with 8 inches by 8 inches. I could have gone larger, but I was conscious of my budget. Plus, if I were to develop a way of making other game boxes like this, I didn't want the Game Boy one to be the biggest. I added the box art and scaled it to the right size. After this, I increased the image borders and added the additional box elements around the front box art. The idea is that these will be folded over the sides, further selling the illusion of a game box. The issue was that I had very little room to work with. There is actually less room on the edge of the canvas than there was on the original box. I could go into great detail about all I went through trying to make this work, but I'm going to have to breeze over many of the struggles here. Because of the sizing discrepancy, nothing I tried worked perfectly. Ultimately, I submitted an image with a slightly distorted side art, subtly squashed to fit better, and in the end my logos got cut off anyway. Always remember, every new project is an experiment, and experimentation is how we learn. I'm glad I made a good attempt to get the edges right, and with what I've learned I know I can correct the next one, but the larger point I want to make is that these side elements do not add enough to the piece to be worth all of the trouble I went through. Unless you are getting a thicker, prestige format canvas, I would recommend you don't bother. It really isn't necessary. As for mine, I don't actually mind the side logos being folded over like this. It still remains very evocative of the original, and the existence or lack of side elements has no bearing on how much I love the view from the front anyway. But you have to know, this isn't the only one I purchased.
I was determined to figure out a way to make at least one more box art canvas, but this time not a square. Seeing how the NES box art wasn't oblong enough to fit the 2 to 3 aspect ratio of the 8x12 I was hoping to purchase next, I tried to think of a different game box that was longer, and my first thought was Sega CD and Saturn games. So I grabbed the cover art for another game with personal meaning, Nights in the Dreams, to see if it would fit better. And wouldn't you know it, it had the opposite problem, not being wide enough. But that's when inspiration took over. In literally five minutes, I'd added the ridges as seen on the original case, and I took one last stab at filling out the edge with thematically appropriate elements that when folded down would harken back to its original hard case. Let's take a look at how it turned out. Oh, I think it's just gorgeous. I ordered this one before my first order even came in, so I'd made the same sizing error on the sides, but again, I'm absolutely not bothered by this. It turned out so well otherwise. With two successes under my belt, I wasn't willing to give up on NES and other box art types that easily, so I went back to the drawing board with fresh eyes. Bringing up my target size once again and stretching my Super Mario Bros. 3 art to match still leaves a bit of a gap on the top and bottom, but those gaps are pretty small. Even though it's easy to get used to, I really, really didn't want to distort the art to force it to fit. If I increase the size uniformly until it's all covered, the sides lose their margins and become cramped. Hmm, what if I simply filled those gaps with the edge color? And boom, a nearly indistinguishable alteration to the art makes the whole project work. Subtle changes like this may make other boxes possible too. Something like black box NES games can work easily. I really wanted to do a Sonic 2 canvas as well. I was able to do it, but it took a bit more effort. It really comes down to the box art in question and how easily you can find a way to adapt it. I don't see easy or elegant solution to game boxes like SNES or N64, but it comes down to your editing skill, willingness to accept compromise, and your creativity. And here's my final two finished prints. On Mario 3, I went with a stretched edge option, which simply takes the edgemost colors from the front and carries them down the sides. This turned out so well, and I don't miss the side elements at all. And lastly, here's Sonic 2. For this one, I went with a simple black edge border they offered. Even though Sonic 2 originally came in a case instead of a box, this still worked out really well. There are other print media besides canvas that you could consider for a project like this. These include board prints, photo tiles, or even printed metal posters. They would each give a slightly different effect, but you could easily pick what best suits your style. And right now I'm being hounded by targeted ads showing a world of other products that I could customize with these images. I'm so happy with how this whole project worked out. I ordered my first one on a whim and I had no idea at the time that I'd be making a video to chronicle the process, but I liked it so much and I thought you might appreciate it too. I'm certain others have made similar wall art, but I hadn't seen a tutorial before, so I thought this could help. Thanks again for staying until the end. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. These things help my channel so much. I hope to talk to you again soon. Take care.